With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West. Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. What's our story this time, Hoppy? We call this one Bullfight. It began when California and I stopped off at Dade Larkin's Box L on our way back to the Bar 20 after a visit over New Mexico way. We'd known Dade a long time, and as it was getting on towards sundown and grub time, we decided to stop off at his place for the night. We stopped all right, but all through supper that evening, Dade never stopped talking about the great things he was doing to upgrade his beef stock. Yes, sir, Hoppy. You come back through here again five years from now, and you won't hardly recognize my brand. Now, California, pass me that there sorghum, will you? Pass me something, pass me something. You fellas getting awful polite over here, or you just get short arms. <laughs> a man who can't do his own reaching ain't hardly deserving to be. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a point there, California. But you fellas wouldn't be trying to make me forget what I was talking about, would you? Oh, not at all, Dad. Don't you even think it. <laughs> okay, I won't. Which is a mighty handy thing, because I ain't told you yet about that purebred white-faced bull I got in today. Oh, here he goes again, Hoppy. You've uh, bought a purebred, you say? Yes, sir, I have. Come today. Paid over $1,000 for him. Yes, sir, and that ain't all. I've got two more. Got them in a couple of weeks ago. They already been turned loose out in the range. Caught you plenty, didn't they? You ain't just talking, Hoppy. The three of them together cost me between three and four thousand. Hmm. Hoppy, them bulls just gotta help me upgrade this here herd of mine. If they don't, well, I'm telling you, I ain't just throwed. I'm also hogtied. <laughs> well, I hope they do, Dade. But I'm not quite sure I like this. Hmm? Why not? Well, in the first place, the, this is still all open range. Well, what if it is? Well, come on, speak up, Hoppy. I thought I'd been telling you good news, but from that look you got in your face, it, it might have been nothing but bad. Well, what is it, Hoppy? Come on, come on, out with it. Dade, I hate to say this, but I'm not sure you haven't been telling me bad news. Hmm? You see, purebreds on free range like this sometimes cause trouble. They don't... Hey, what's that? Oh, God. Well, that sounded like it was over the carriage. Come on, let's see what that is. Uh, might have been a wolf trying to get at the calves. Somebody might have took some shots at him. Oh, ain't been a wolf seen around here for the past two years. Besides, ain't none of my men on the place tonight. Look over there. Looks like something's down. Where about? In that round pen. Hey, that's where I put my hip. Come on. That's your new purebred, all right. Looks like he's dead. Yeah, he's dead, all right. Cost me over a thousand dollars. Somebody shot him. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Bullfight. Seated at supper with Dade Larkin at Dade's Box L, Hoppy and California were roused by the sound of shots. Following after Dade and hastening outside, they discovered that someone had wantonly shot down and killed Dade's expensive, purebred Hereford bull. It took Dade a moment to realize the blow that had been struck at him. But now he suddenly turns upon Hoppy in a towering rage. Hoppy, you knew something about this. You tell me what it was. Who did this? You tell me what you know about it. Dade, take it easy. Let go of it. Now, don't go trying to push Hoppy around, Dade, or maybe you'll find yourself pushing up daisies. Oh, I... Sorry, Hoppy. I'm sorry. I guess I got so all fired and mad I forgot myself. Uh, that's all right. Forget about it. I don't blame you. Ah, uh, but from the way you talked inside, for a second there, I felt suspicious. You start to say something about these purebreds of mine, maybe start in trouble. Now, you must have meant something by that, Hoppy. What was it? Well, nothing you shouldn't have realized for yourself, Dade. 
This is still free range. You're living in a country where cows have to rustle for a living. Longhorns can do that. Lots of people feel that purebreds won't stand up under the conditions that cows have to face out here. Yeah, yeah, I know that. I've heard them arguing. All was said, that was a lot of foo for all. But maybe some of your neighbors don't agree with you. And don't forget that when you turn those bulls out on open range, you'll be upgrading your neighbor's beef as well as your own. You mean to say one of them might have done this? Could be, Dade. Let's face it. Happened other places, hasn't it? Uh Huh? Oh, wouldn't none of my neighbors do a low-down stunt like this, Hoppy. I've known most of them near half a lifetime. I... Hey, wait a second. Hoppy, you told me something without me realizing it. Tim Riley. What's that? Who's here, Tim Riley? The only new neighbor I got. He's horned into my range over south of here. Come here about six months ago. Just about as popular with the others around here as a hydrophobic skunk. Oh, well, there's nothing unusual about that, Dade. When a new man moves on to range that's already been claimed, he's never very popular. Oh, uh, but Riley's a skunk by nature. If one of my neighbors done this, then he's the one. You'll need some proof. Got all the proof I need. My bull's dead, ain't he? Yeah, but that isn't proof. You it's certainly... proof enough for me, Hoppy. Come on, let's turn in. I want to get a good night's sleep. Because when morning comes, I'm riding over to Riley's and presenting my bill. Well, Hoppy, it's morning, and we're on our way again. Sanctified polecats. Won't I be glad to see the old bar 20 the day we ride in there? I'm just oh, gonna... Oh, Copper, oh. Uh, 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 whoa there, whoa. Uh, say, uh, what's the matter with you, Hoppy? Uh, what are we stopping for? I've just changed my mind, California. Huh? Changed it? Changed it uh, about what? About heading right back for the bar 20. I've been thinking things over. Thinking about the way Dade looked when he started for Riley's this morning. You know, there's gonna be trouble about that killing of the bull... I don't think we should leave until it's cleared up. If there's going to be trouble, that's just the best reason in the world why we ought to leave. Come on, let's turn back. Uh, where are we going now? Back to Dade's place? No, to Riley's. Come on, let's go. on it. Get up, boy. <laughs> No, Riley. I ain't staying out till I'm invited in. I'm here to collect for that bull you shot last night. And by thunder, I either collect or take it out of your hide. That's what you think. I don't know anything about the killing of that bull of yours. All I know is, whoever did it had the right idea. Why, you... Uh, hey, take that little stinking killer. Here's more for you. What? You big lummox. Uh, I'll kill you. I'll, I'll kill you. Cut this up. All right, Dade, up with you. Get off it. Let me alone. Let me alone, I tell you. Get up and quit acting like a two-year-old. Are you all right, Riley? Yeah. I'm all right. But if you'd been a couple of seconds later, that friend of yours wouldn't have been. Uh, Dade, I thought you had better sense. And I thought you'd headed back for the bar 20 where you belong. What are you doing back here? Stopping you from making a fool of yourself. Now, you two are going to shake hands. Huh? Me? With him? Hey, what are you talking about? You shake hands or I'll take you on. Oh. Well, I guess I did make a mighty fool out of myself, Hoppy. But shaking hands... You'll uh... do it and like it. And so will you, Riley. Uh, this is the way range wars start. But this is one war that's never going to get started. Well, I, I didn't want to fight. Good. Shake hands on it, then. Well, Riley, I'm hot-headed. Maybe I did kind of jump to conclusions without near enough proof. If I did, well, I'm sorry and I'd like to apologize. Yeah, thanks. That's mighty, mighty big of you, Larkin. I, I... Oh, hey. oh, oh. Who, who, who's this coming? Well, that's Bart, one of my men. Hey, Bart. Bart, what is it? Boss, his blaze is to pay. What is it? What's happened? Them other two purebred bulls of yours, boss, I rode out to where they was grazing at this morning, only they ain't. Ain't grazing, I mean. Hmm? They're dead. They're both of them dead. What's that? How did they die? Somebody shot them. Who did it? 
You got any idea, Bob? Who did it? I got a darn good idea who done it, Bo. It was Riley here. Huh? When I rode up to him, one of his men was just riding away. Well, as I told you, Sheriff, after that, the fur started to fly. I just got date and Riley quieted down. When Bart rode in with the news about the other two bulls, I thought they'd jump at each other's throats. Well, what stopped them? This colt. He used his fist and aid, Sheriff, and showed Riley he wouldn't mind using the gun on him. <laughs> it was real gratifying to see the way that soothed him. Uh, I'll bet. But uh, what is you two fellas going to see me for? Want me to find out who really killed them bulls? Uh, if you can, Sheriff, that'll be fine. We were wondering if you knew anybody besides Riley who'd like to make trouble for Dade. Mm, no, can't think of anybody, Hobby. Dade and Riley, they've been real mad at each other ever since Riley come here. Yeah. You see, Riley moved on to the range that Dade always figured was his. Yeah, I know that. And I don't blame Dade for getting mad. It's cost him plenty, without counting them bulls either. Hey, hey, Hoppy. What is it? Here comes Bart again. The way that fella travels, he ought to sprout wings. Horses don't seem fast enough. Hmm. He's coming in. Hey, Sheriff. Cassidy. What is it now, Bart? Cassidy, this time I got real news for you. I know who killed them bulls. It was... Why, what the... Bart. Hey, Bart. He's got a knife in him. Somebody broke that window to throw a knife. California, get outside. See if you can find him. I'll do that, Hoppy. Hoppy. Bart, how is he? Do you think he'll be able to talk? Just a second, Sheriff. That's what I'm trying to find out. No, he won't talk. He's dead. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Bullfight. Hoppy and California had called upon the sheriff to learn who Dade Larkin's enemies might be. They were presently interrupted by one of Dade's hands, a man known as Bart. And almost immediately afterwards, by Bart's murder. Now we see Hoppy and the sheriff just after Hoppy has pronounced Bart dead. Bart knew something all right, Sheriff. And the man who killed him is the man we're after. Well, we'd be after him in any case now, Hoppy. Maybe we'd better go outside and give California a hand. If the killer's anywhere around, we... No need to go out. Here they come. Yeah, they're... Yeah, who's that he's holding on to? Well, I'll be switched. It's Tim Riley. Yeah, someone's given California a hand. You know him, Sheriff? Well, yeah, yeah, that's High Phillips. He's another rancher here in the valley. Owns a flat iron just north of Dade's place. Oh. Hi there. Hello, Phillips. I see you and California got him. Yeah, here's the man you want, all right. Yeah, I caught him just as he was hitting the saddle, aiming to leave town. Pretty upset about it, too. Reckon he figures if he's decent enough to go around killing fellas, the law ought to be decent enough to let him alone. Sheriff, sure. this is a lot of nonsense. I, I never killed anybody. If you don't believe me, take a look at my gun. You can tell it ain't been fired. Bart wasn't killed with a gun, Riley. He was killed with a knife. Oh. I, I didn't know that. Well, I, I never carry a knife. You can ask anybody. Nobody's ever seen me carry a knife. What were you doing here? You must have headed for town almost as soon as we did. I, I came in for supplies. Feller's got a right to buy supplies, hasn't he? Sure. And you can prove that? Sure, I can. Go ask him over at the store. You didn't actually see Riley throw the knife, did you, Phillips? I didn't see anybody do anything. I only came into this because I saw your friend here grab Riley. And it looked as if he needed help. I see. But if you want my opinion, Riley did it. If he doesn't usually carry a knife, all the more reason he should use one this time. He's no good, Cassidy. The sooner he's run out of here, the better for all of us. I've heard he isn't exactly popular. What do you think, Sheriff? Well, I, I think I'd better hold him. I don't see how you can. Well, why not? No evidence. Just his being in town doesn't prove anything. You didn't see anyone else around when you went outside, did you, California? No, no. If I had, I'd have rounded him up, too. That's just what I thought. 
If I were you, Sheriff, I'd let Riley go. Well, if you say so, Hoppy. I do. I think it's best. Okay, Riley. Go on, get out of here. But we'll be watching you, and don't you forget that. Yeah, I ain't likely to. Maybe I'll see you fellas another time. Hey, wait a minute, Riley. Wait a minute. Yeah, Phillips? Sheriff, who the blazes is running to your office anyway? You or Cassidy? Well, Hoppy's got a name for knowing how to handle this kind of thing. Hogwash. Riley, you listen to me. Yeah? I don't care what Cassidy or the sheriff says. You get out of this valley, you hear me? Get out or you'll be run out. Yeah? <laughs> Suppose you come and chase me out. Maybe I'll do that. Sheriff, this is a disgrace, not locking that fella up. And as for you, Cassidy, I don't care what you say. We're not letting Riley stay in this valley one day longer than we gotta. You hear me? He's getting out. Uh-huh. But that's your business. I've got business of my own to attend to. Yeah, what's that, Hoppy? I'm gonna look up Dade. Maybe he knows the same thing Bart did. Come on, California. Let's go. <laughs> I don't know a thing, I tell you. I didn't know Bart had found out anything. In fact, the matter is, uh, I didn't know he'd gone into town. Till you just now told me, I didn't even know he'd been killed. And I tell you, it's a doggone shame, Hoppy. Bart was a good man. A good man. He'd worked for me for a long time. I tell you, I'm going to see the fellow that done it strung up if it cost me my ranch. Your friends seem to feel the same way. Especially High Phillips. He mostly seems to think uh, Riley done it. Well, I don't know. Now, I tell you, I don't know. Killing bulls is one thing, but killing men's another. I don't know if I'd size Riley up to be a man killer or not. Uh, how about that knife you mentioned, Hoppy? You say it didn't have any identification on it? I didn't say. I didn't even mention a knife. You didn't what? Wait a second. Look there. What? Oh, it's High Phillips. And looks like he's got a just about every rancher in the valley with him. Maybe he meant what he said back there at the sheriff's office. Well. Hi there. What's up? We've come to see if you don't want to join us, Dave. Oh, I won't. We're going to pay Riley a little call. We got an idea you might like to come along. What kind of a call is this, Phillips? A business call. We call it that because we mean business. Either Riley leaves the valley willing or he leaves on a rail. We're giving him that choice. Oh, look here now, Hoppy. I don't think we can allow you to do I this, I thought you up. might we... say that, Cassidy. All right, Jake, let him have it. Uh, Hoppy, watch out. One of them sneak behind yes. you. <laughs> oh, why, you skunks. You've knocked Hoppy out. Don't huh? move, mister. I'll... We got you covered. Well, what about it, Dade? You coming with us or not? I'm not. And if I ever get my hands on the... Well, what you just done... You here. won't, I'm afraid. Tie the three of them up, Ben. And we'll get going. Oh, mm. oh hey, look at here, Dade. He's a coming, too. Yeah. Hoppy, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What about Phillips? The rest of them. Where did they go? They went on to Riley's, Hoppy. They tied us up first, but we got loose. All we've been waiting for is uh, you to come, too. All right. And come on. Uh, Let's sure. get after them. You, you're all right, Hoppy? Oh, I'm all right. We got to get the Riley's. <laughs> He's out of ammunition. Come on, we'll rush him. This way, follow me. You fellas, get back. First one in this door gets his head busted open. Break that door down. Come on, men. Get at it. Let me hear him. Let me hear him. Someone light a torch. 
torch. Set the house afire. Look for some tar. We'll ride this skunk out on a rail. That's what you think you'll do. Get back. Get your hands up. Come on, Dade. You too, California. Keep these fellas covered. You bet, Hoppy. We'll do that. Now listen, you fellas. Listen to me. I know the name of the killer. Riley is innocent. You hear me? Riley is innocent. But if Riley ain't behind all this, who is? He's one of your neighbors. One who's been here for years. He's the man who planned all this. The man who wanted Riley driven out of the valley so he could grab his range. He's... California is running for it. Throw a loop on it. I'll do that, little thing. Hey, don't come back here. Come back, you Philip shot. Hop, this is what's dragging the loco steer. I didn't do it. I didn't kill anyone. You can't blame this on me. Then why'd you run for it? I thought you were going to frame me. The way you said it sounded like that to me. But I didn't kill anybody. I tell you, I didn't well, kill anybody. Well, a likely story. Yeah, but he's Probably right. He's telling the truth, California. Uh, 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 what's that you said, Hoppy? Phillips didn't kill anyone. The killer is still right here. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. What's that you said, Hoppy? You said the killer's right here, but he ain't really Riley or Phillips? That's right, Dade. Neither one of them. Well, then who is? I'll describe him to you, Dade. Maybe you'll recognize him. Yeah? He's the rancher who pretended to know so little about the cattle business that he didn't even know that the introduction of purebreds on open range might cause trouble. But they, they... He's the man who pretended to know nothing about Bart's death and yet knew he'd been knifed before I even told him he hadn't been shot. Listen, Hoppy, if you're trying to say... That... He's the man who had most to gain by seeing Riley run out of the valley. It was his range Riley had moved in on. You hold up a second, Hoppy. You're making that fellow sound like me. Am I, Dade? That's good. You're just the man I mean. I suppose I killed my own bulls. Bulls have cost me over $3,000. You can bet you did. It was worth it, too. Losing this range must have cost you twenty or 30000 You had one of your men do it, of course. And somehow Bart found out about it. So when he tried to tell us... You, you... dirty pull... Look out! Look out! Look out! He's got you covered with a shotgun! No, don't pull those triggers, Dade. And don't try to fight this thing. You've been as good as strung up ever since you made that slip about the knife. I'm going to take that shotgun away from you, Dade. No! Stay where you are. You come one step closer and I'll shoot. I'm coming, Dade. I'm gonna take it, Dade. All right, Blast, you take it. <laughs> Why? I shot right at you. Why don't you fall? I kind of thought you'd try this, Dade. There's been no shot in those shells since we left your ranch. Take him away, boys. I used to figure Dade was my friend. But when a friend becomes a proven killer, friendship ends. You know, Hoppy, I gotta hand it to you. It sure takes a lot of courage to do that. What do you mean, courage to do what? To turn again a friend like that and practically hand him over to the hangman. Well, it wasn't an easy thing to do. Friendship is a nice thing to lean on, though. Especially when you've known someone a long time. Friendship is like a refuge you can turn to when you're tired or worried. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. My friendship with Dade was like that. Oh, he talked a lot. But I enjoyed his company as well as anyone I ever knew. It was a shock to find out he'd turned selfish and, and bad. Yeah, I guess it hurt all right. Uh, uh, Hoppy, uh, I've been thinking uh -huh. that... Uh, so have I. I. I know, but uh, what I was going to say was, I've been thinking about a friend of mine who I'd like to visit a lot. When you're tired or worried? No, when I'm hungry. Ho, 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 you and your appetite. Ha, 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 
And so Dade Larkin becomes just another loser in the fight against justice. And Hoppy heads back for a rest on the Bar 20. But he'll be riding out into another danger-filled adventure next time we meet when he and California go hunting for the gal who makes the best beef stew west of Topeka. They find her all right, along with the other women of Windy Ridge. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Bullfight was written by Gibson Scott Fox, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>